Welcome everybody to the Genesis Mindset. In this episode, I want to talk about the value that's being generated from within Pulse Chain. I think, again, there's this huge focus on value that's outside coming into the chain. And I think that that future is going to come. I think that's an inevitability. I think at the moment, obviously, everything that's happening uh, with the chain and getting interoperable and all the issues surrounding the SEC and whatnot, I think that's really limiting people's confidence in the chain. And that's fine. But once those things are lifted, then it's really just opportunity. So I think setting ourselves up early, setting myself up now is probably going to be one of the best things that I can do in this particular blockchain. Yes, of course, accumulating Pulse Chain, but actually becoming a part of Pulse Chain. So I want to just start by just sharing this little video clip. Kind of like we're building the stair step up to up to moon, up to heaven, up, up to you know wherever a good place is. Do you see the things happening in place such as liquid loans launching, all of this USDL being minted? What, what, what are the steps on the staircase to, to, you know, to get us where we want to go? Okay, so that's my opinion now, obviously. But I, I see the, uh, the liquid loans and the power seat, uh, imminent launch with Earn. Uh, they, they, those are uh, building blocks of uh, providing value uh, extraction from assets. Uh, that allows us to, to do what we said earlier previously with bonding liquidity across different chains. Well, what's going to come in the future here very shortly is um, uh, a, a interoperability between chains and ability to uh, to cross trade safely and effectively without having to have bridge risk. So that's something that's very important in my opinion. So without any bridge risk, that kind of technology is coming. So Neil for T-Shares is basically saying that technology is coming, but the interoperability between chains, that is a key. That's one of the defining unique features of Pulse Chain is that it was a fork of Ethereum and it copied the system state. It didn't just create its own blockchain. It actually created something that complemented an existing blockchain. So it's like the little brother of Ethereum, which is like our older brother. So I think that that's something that's very unique. I think there's a foresight there that sees ah, the future of blockchains is interoperable. I think that's a very key point that's only really dawned on me from actually watching and listening to this kind of clip. That's coming. Well, the technology is being built as we speak with different protocols. And so once that hits, then uh, the ability to, to, to have cross-chain swapping and arbitrage, and those, those type of options will be available in effective and fast and a safe manner. So, that, I, so all these things will build up to uh, uh, situations like that. So that's the significance of it, that it will build up to a future of interoperability where people can actually take advantage of the swaps between the different chains. That's one of the plays, arbitrage, creating huge liquidity pools between blockchains. Right now, already we're starting to see people starting to bridge Ethereum assets across and actually start liquidity pools. And so they pair up the liquidity pools of the bridge across Ethereum asset. So for example, um, Aave, they'll bridge across Aave, create a liquidity pool with Aave and Pulse Chain, create a liquidity pool with Aave and a stable coin and create a liquidity pool with Aave and the copied Aave, the forked Aave. And so as they do this, there's arbitrage opportunities between the price that says it's like a it's like a stable coin basically because the Aave on Ethereum is stable to the Aave on Pulse Chain and so the arbitrage that happens between those two prices the bots can take advantage of and people can take advantage of as well um, but then also selling selling the PRC twenty copies basically creates an arbitrage opportunity where over time you can start to lift the price up of PRC twenty and the way that works is is because this is stable. The, Ar the Aave from Ethereum is stable to the, to the actual Ethereum Aave. So as this price drops, you're selling the PRC20 copy down. This is staying the same. This is staying the same. So you can sell it, but then you can really just buy it back up with this. You're accumulating more of this. And so you can just buy it up as it gets cheaper and cheaper. I think that's how it works. I'm actually not really 100% too sure. There's some people who are adamant about it. I'm actually just in the process of trying to understand it myself. Even as I explain it there, it's a little bit unclear. And the more pulse we have bonded to Ethereum, the more we pump when Ethereum pumps. And, and the reverse is true, obviously, as well. So, uh, but that's just the market, right? And, and it's really, really hard for a chain to be isolated and do well without a constant flow of fresh capital. And so as long as we're isolated we're not, and not having fresh capital come in, we'll be a stagnant chain. We'll just be trading amongst ourselves, which is kind of what's happening at now. If you look at the, at the, uh, 
um, the overall uh, trade value uh, on a daily basis. And so, and once we have tools, automation tools and stuff like Tetranel come into play, some of those things will probably pump up as far as the uh, daily transactions. But until we go across chain uh, or bring fresh capital in, we'll, we'll kind of be, in a, be treading water the whole time. If the future is interoperable and we can kickstart an economic system within our own blockchain, it makes it very attractive once the interoperability between all the different chains actually exists. It's seamless at the moment. It's like a bit, it's a bit tricky. It's not as seamless, it's not as seamless as you would want it to be, but it will eventually get there. Of course, it's going to become as easy as just clicking a few buttons, well, which is what it is now, but it's going to probably be more on one UI or one interface or one website, whatever it's going to be. And so if we can actually generate a system within ourselves that perpetuates value and actually creates value, quote unquote, out of thin air and preserves the value within the blockchain, that's a very, very powerful marketing tool if it's something that exists within this blockchain. And I think definitely more than any other blockchain, the fact that we have liquidity bonding here in a way that's designed from the ground up, for example, through the Atropa ecosystem is something that is a very, very powerful tool moving forward. Yes, we do want new liquidity. Yes, we do want new value. But even within the blockchain at the moment, I think that's something that I would disagree with Neil for T-shares is that actually we can start generating value within this ecosystem just by participating with all the different tokens within the ecosystem. Because what actually happens is as liquidity moves around from so as I showed in a previous video, the liquidity is basically just moving from, let's say, a tropa, takes a profit in a tropa, it went into PRS, went into Mega, went into PTGC, went into HSA, and now it's, of course, there's other things in between HOA and um, ROB and all other kinds of tokens, but now it's cycling back, cycling back to where it started. So it started with a tropa, a tropa, PDI. These, these tokens that were being liquidity bonded from day one, this is where it started from. So whoever designed this system, 414 Maria, has actually designed this from the start. And so this liquidity bonding, because of the arbitrage bots, so a tropa will be bonded with all different kinds of liquidity pools. So once a tropa goes up, the other things are going up as well. And so there's arbitrages actually happening between, so if a tropa is paired to TSFI and a tropa is going up, it's pulling up TSFI. But if TSFI is actually technically not really having new value it's just going up by virtue of the fact that the atropa pool is going up then things that the tsfi is paired with there's arbitrage opportunities there and so the arbitrage bots are basically like leaving little pieces behind and continuing to create this forever floor again this is something that's so unique to pulse chain it isn't it is it isn't in anything else that i know of and it isn't something that i fully understand yet i've obviously been like looking at this for two or three months now going down a whole bunch of different rabbit holes, like pulling up hundreds of different charts and trying to compare all these different charts. And okay, if it goes from here, then it, then it goes from here. But what's actually happening is as these things move, everything is kind of moving at different stages. And so the, the hope is there's all these different strands in the Atropa ecosystem that lead up to Atropa. And so the hope is that there'll be like, liquidity flowing through this strand. And as it flows through that strand, everything else that it's connected to is also going up. And then of course, as long as people don't destroy the prices, it'll end up creating a floor, a forever floor. So people will start creating liquidity pools, bonding it with more things, trying to take advantage of the arbit arbitrage bots and the trading volume and basically generating tokens and just leaving it there for interest and having it as a long-term plan, a long-term mindset and that delayed gratification. Then it will go through another avenue. And as it goes and it goes through that avenue, there's other opportunities within that avenue. And so there's so many different tokens. But the beauty is now that the 414 is now starting to get paired up with lots of other different tokens. So for example, uh, Teddy Bear and Rob. So Rob might not actually have any value coming into it, might all just be coming through Teddy Bear. And if Teddy Bear is going up, then Rob is going up. So if you have Rob, yeah, you could sell a little bit of Rob and you didn't the value of Rob didn't actually really go up. It only went up by virtue of the fact of its bonding with Teddy Bear. And so this is the beauty of liquidity bonding. This is one of the unique things about liquidity bonding. So I really want to try and understand this more. I'm really trying to understand this more and I'm really trying to deliver this to you guys and have you guys also share with me your understanding of it. So, so Vivian did reach out to me today about the A1A. And so the whatever whatever mechanism the A1A is going by, 
um, basically was trying to share that with me. <laughs> I didn't fully understand it, admittedly. There's a lot of stuff there and it probably is very simple, but my head just hasn't wrapped wrapped itself around it yet. So once I actually understand what A1A is doing, I want to then deliver that to you guys as well. So again, if you guys learn something new, if you find something out, you let me know and let's learn together. That's what this is all about. So thank you very much, everybody. And we'll see you tomorrow.